Hello, I am Alon Burstein, visiting assistant professor in the Department of Political Science and Israel Institute fellow at the University of California, Irvine, here to give you the updates to the last 24 hours of the Israel-Hamas war. It is currently the eve of October 23rd, 2023 in the United States, the morning of October 24th, 2023 in the Middle East. Starting with the aftermath of the initial attack on October 7th, the hostage situation, those kidnapped Israelis are held in the Gaza Strip. After it was rumored today that Hamas is going to release 50 of its kidnapped people with dual citizenship, so those are Israelis that hold also either American or British or German or French citizenship. Two hostages were released today, an 85-year-old and 80-year-old woman. They were released to Egypt and then later transferred to Israel, and Hamas thanked Egypt and Qatar for facilitating and organizing this release. In a movie that was later shown by Hamas's military wing, al Qassam, the Hamas militants are shown escorting the women to the meeting with the Red Cross. They are shown giving the women coffee and offering them different candies. And at the end, one of the women shakes hands with a Hamas captor. It is presumed that the reason for the release of this movie is Hamas is trying to improve its international image after Israel has been releasing more and more recordings from Hamas's attack on October 7th. Hamas is trying to make sure that the world media is showing images of them releasing hostages instead of images from the initial attack. There are also other speculation that this could be associated with either negotiations regarding the humanitarian aid or with forestalling Israel's ground invasion. I get back to these points later. Prior to this release, Israel reported today that 222 Israelis have been identified as held by Hamas in the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. So as of now, since four were released until now, there are 218 identified Israelis that are being held hostage. Moving on to some of the ongoing fighting in the Gaza Strip. There were continuous rockets and missiles that were fired from the Gaza Strip, targeting primarily the southern parts of Israel today. So there were rockets that were aimed at Ashkelon, Ashdod, the entire area surrounding the Gaza Strip, Beersheva, and Sderot, where there was identified at least three different hits, one of them in a children's park. The town of Sderot is largely abandoned. It was hit very, very hard in the initial attack of October 7th. A lot of people that were killed, a lot of people that were kidnapped, and anyone who remained in the town has been evacuated. In addition, there were d several drones that were seen in the areas surrounding the Gaza Strip. These were drones that were attack drones that were sent by Hamas, likely, in the surrounding areas. Some of them were shot down. In Israeli retaliations, Israel continued its bombardment throughout the Gaza Strip, focusing primarily in the north and specifically in the town of Jabalia. The IDF reported that it carried out over 320 air raids in the last 24 hours. And among these, the head of Hamas's northern anti-tank operations, Ibrahim al-Dahar, was assassinated. According to the Palestinian Ministry of Health, since the war began, 5,087 Palestinians were killed in the Gaza Strip. Of them, just over 2,050 are children. Moving on to the humanitarian aid, there was a third convoy of trucks entering the Gaza Strip today through the Rafah crossing. These were 20 trucks that were carrying food, water, and medical supplies. I remind everyone that during regular times, over 500 trucks of humanitarian aid enter the Gaza Strip through Israel and through Egypt every single day. So during this very, very heightened escalation in times of war, 20 trucks a day are not nearly going to fulfill the humanitarian needs in the Gaza Strip. President Biden and Prime Minister Netanyahu spoke again yesterday and agreed that humanitarian aid will continue to flow into the Gaza Strip. However, amidst this, the World Health Organization called on Israel to allow the entrance of fuel into Gaza in order to reach the hospital generators. Israel, when the war began, cut off the electrical supply to the Gaza Strip. The hospitals there are operating only on generators and they are running out of fuel. According to the UN, the entrance of fuel is possibly part of the ongoing negotiations in the release of hostages. According to sources within Hamas, fuel exchange is part of the negotiation on the release of foreign nationals that are held by the groups. In addition, according to the Qatari newspaper, Arab al Jadid, Egypt today offered to set up a refugee camp in the southern parts of the Gaza Strip. So Egypt is not allowing Palestinians to evacuate from the Gaza Strip into Egypt for fear that they will not be allowed back in. However, it is offering to set up and supervise a refugee camp in the southern parts of the Gaza Strip. In addition, it was also stated that Egypt is involved in negotiating the release of more hostages, primarily those with U.S. citizenship, in exchange for possibly the entrance of 200 tons of humanitarian aid. So this is part, possibly part of the ongoing negotiations the United Nations was referring to. In addition, in the West Bank, the IDF is continuing its clampdown on Hamas and Palestinian Islamic Jihad activities there, and there are continuous escalations. Two Palestinians were killed north of the town of Ramallah by in confrontations with the IDF. According to the Palestinian Health Ministry, over 90 Palestinians were killed in the West Bank since the war began. And according to the IDF, by now over 500 Hamas members have been arrested in the West Bank in the last two weeks. 
Moving on to the north of Israel, there continued low-level escalations between Israel and Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, as reported every day. Today, the IDF continued its retaliations following five different incursion attempts that occurred two days ago. The IDF targeted Hezbollah operations, Hezbollah bases, as well as weapons caches. In addition, it targeted different units that were trying to fire mortar fires into the area of Hardov. Hezbollah fired several rockets into area, into different areas in Israel. Some of these targeted the town of Akko, some of these Kiryat Shmona. Two Israelis were injured in Kiryat Shmona. In addition, there was a drone sent from southern Lebanon that was shot down, and this is all part of ongoing escalations that are involving Iran, and I remind everyone that Iran has threatened that it will activate all of its regional allies to target both Israel and the United States if the war continues to escalate. And associated directly with that, moving on to some of the regional developments, there were three different drone attacks that occurred against U.S. bases in northern Syria. So the United States still has bases in northern Syria and still has military personnel throughout Iraq as well. Iraqi Hezbollah, which is a group that is different than Hezbollah, Hezbollah just means the party of God. So the Iraqi Hezbollah is a different militia that is loyal to Iran, took responsibility for one of these drone attacks against different U.S. bases. The Iraqi Prime Minister today, anticipating ongoing regional escalation, ordered increased security around U.S. bases. And it was also reported today the United States is preparing to send in more troops to the area, all anticipating this regional escalation that might occur when Israel carries out its ground invasion. I get back to this a little bit later when I talk about some of the negotiations with Israel and the United States. On to some of the political developments that occurred. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu today met with the Prime Minister of Greece and the President of Cyprus. As in addition, the President of France is due to arrive in Israel tomorrow. In addition, it was reported that after the attack on October 7th, Turkey announced that the Hamas leaders that were housed in Turkey are ordered to leave the country. Now, this does not mean that there is a rift between Turkey and Hamas. In fact, the President of Turkey, Erdogan, spoke to Ismail Haniya, the leader of Hamas, just yesterday and discussed the regional developments. This may end up proving significant because where different leaders of organizations are housed, used to be in Syria, so then in Lebanon, Turkey, Qatar, ends up being important when it comes to different pressure valves. Usually the host countries are able to mount a lot of pressure on leaders to accept certain deals, certain negotiations, certain terms. So the fact that Turkey does not want the Hamas leadership to be in Turkey may indicate that they do not want to be involved in you now have to pressure them to do A, B, and C. Moving on to some of the future speculations regarding when is Israel going to invade Gaza, what is going to be the future of the Gaza Strip after these invasions. There are increasing speculation that suggests that Israel is possibly ready to carry out this invasion, but is being pressured by the United States to hold off. Within Israel, the Israeli Defense Force today again stated that their plans are ready, that the army, as far as it's concerned, is ready to invade, and made explicit that in order to achieve the aims that the political establishment has outlined, which is the destruction of the Hamas movement, a ground invasion will have to occur. This cannot only happen from aerial bombardments. However, this, according to leaks from the cabinet, is being held up by Prime Minister Netanyahu. So amidst this, some of the further leaks that are showing that the U.S. is heavily pressuring Israel to forestall the invasion. It was reported today that the United States has asked Israel to hold off the invasion, first of all, until it is able to send more troops to the region. So this relates to the regional escalation we were talking about before. The United States has already sent in two aircraft carriers, 2,000 Marines, deployed anti-aircraft and anti-missile anti batteries. It is now planning to send more troops to the region, and it has asked Israel to hold off for the invasion. This is rumored until those troops arrive. In addition, it is also rumored that the United States is asking Israel to hold off on the invasion until we can maximize the hostage negotiation, the possible exchange specifically of the hostages with U.S. citizenship. The White House administration today also reported that there is increasing concern within the U.S. administration that the IDF plans are too ambitious and cannot be attained, and that is one of the reasons they're asking Israel to hold off and to refine some of its goals. Either way, the United States today suggested that it is not controlling when Israel invades or not, but it has stressed that Israel has to fight according to the rules of war if and when that invasion does occur. In addition, responding to all these pressures, there were several photo ops today of Netanyahu taken with the chief of staff trying to show that everyone is coordinated. So while the army is suggesting that the, there is no coordination or there is limited coordination with the political establishment over when this ground invasion will occur, there were photo ops today of Netanyahu trying to show that this is not the case. However, it was also rumored that Netanyahu met with a former general and current politician, Gabi Ashkenazi, to discuss the war with him. This may end up being significant because 
different members within the cabinet are suggesting different plans, different operations, Netanyahu may be switching to, between different ministers and possibly even switching Minister of Defense. All this is rumors and speculations. And finally, part of the pressure in the United States to continuously tell Israel to have good operational plans to invade and then withdraw to not reoccupy the Gaza Strip are related to statements that were made today by Minister of Finance Smotrich. So this is, in Israel, one of the most hawkish ministers in Netanyahu's cabinet. He suggested today, in response to a question, will Israel remain in Gaza? And I'm quoting, he said, we cannot allow threats to be formed beyond the border. This will require us to be there. What does that mean? It is still unclear. So while the IDF is saying the plans are ready, it is possible that, in fact, Israel is not entirely clear on what are the operational plans for the future of the Gaza Strip as of now. That is our report for the last 24 hours. I'll be back tomorrow.